Okay, continuing with our lecture from the first part, I'd like to uh, start with some probabilities on those states of nature now. Let's say that the probabilities on the two states of nature, favorable and unfavorable, are 50-50. That's our best guess. So what we're going to do is calculate the expected value for each uh, alternative. Now, this is a, called the decision tree here. And uh, this is a nice graphical way to, to show your decision and your states of nature, especially if you've got decisions, states of nature, and then more decisions and states of nature. You can think of this as a timeline. This is what's happening now. We make our decision, and this is what happens into the future. So, a rectangle or a square represents a decision node. So we've got our three decisions coming out of the decision node. Large, small, and do nothing. Always be sure to include these decision nodes. <coughs> the circles represent a state of nature node, also known as a chance node. That's where our state of nature is going. Recall that we had two states of nature, favorable and unfavorable, in each branch. Okay? Those are the circles, states of nature nodes. And then we put labels on them, favorable and unfavorable, and we insert the probabilities, 50-50 in this case. <coughs> now, it's, it doesn't have to be that the, the probabilities are the same on every branch. They could be different. The next thing we put on here is our payoffs out here. If you build a large one, and if it's a favorable market, you earn 200. Unfavorable market, minus 180. If you build a small one and it's favorable, you're in 100,000. If it's unfavorable, you lose 20. And if you do nothing, recall that the uh, paths were zero. So that's a complete decision tree. The only thing we've got to do next is roll back the tree. Now, rolling back just means that you calculate the expected value, or in this case, the expected monetary value. The way you do that is you take your probabilities, multiply them, by the payoffs and sum. So it's like some product. 0 0.5 times 200 plus 0 0.5 times minus 180 gives you an expected value of 10. I'm going to write that down here. 0 0.5 times 100 plus 0 0.5 times minus 20. Let's see, that's uh, uh, 50 minus 10 is 40. And then 50 times 0 plus 50 times 0 is just 0. That's called rolling back the tree. Now, these are expected monetary values. And typically, what you do is then select the alternative that has the highest expected monetary value. We'll cross out the other ones. So the highest expected monetary value is there with the small option, 40,000. Does that mean that if we go with the small one, we're going to earn 40,000? No, it doesn't. Half the time, according to our model, we're going to earn 100,000. Half the time, we're going to earn minus 20. So what is the mean of the 40,000 net? Well, that's just an average. On the average, over the long run, if we could do this decision over and over again, we would earn, on the average, 40,000. But if this is a one-shot deal, well, that, that, that number is pretty meaningless because we're either going to earn 100 or minus 20. Now, I'd have a hard time flipping a coin with you right now and taking that minus 20 loss if, if uh, I wasn't able to call it. So I'd really have to think about that. And that's why later on we're going to talk about expected utility and utility functions. Okay, so once again, we cross out the, the options that we're not going to do, and this says we're, we're going to go with the small. Next thing I'd like to calculate is what's known as the EVPI. The EVPI is the expected value of perfect information. Two ways to calculate this. One is with the formula. <coughs> it says the value with perfect information minus the maximum EMV, the value without perfect information. Now, what this is, implies is that we could talk to a godlike entity and this entity would tell us what's going to happen in the future, whether it be favorable or whether it's going to be an unfavorable market. <clears throat> now, clearly, if this guy like entity said it's going to be favorable, then we just go ahead and build a large one and earn 200. But if the guy like entity said it's going to be unfavorable, then we would just do nothing and earn zero. Well, here's the trick. 
What's the probability that this godlike entity would say favorable versus unfavorable? Well, it's 50-50, as before. So we take our 50% times 200 plus 50% times 0, and we get uh, 100. So that's the expected value with the perfect information. But then we have to subtract off what us mere mortals would get anyway, which is the fourth, the maximum EMV from our tree. So it's 100 minus 40 gives us 60. That's $60,000. So that's the added benefit that we get by talking to this godlike entity, if we could. And that's an average over the long run again. On the average over the long run, if we could talk to a godlike entity to give us perfect information, we would earn $60,000 every time. Now there's a second and probably easier way to calculate that. Let's go back to our regret matrix. On our regret matrix over here that we had in the first video, if we calculate the EOL, I've got them in the circle here. The EOL is the expected opportunity loss. And you get that by taking your probabilities times a payoff for each row. 0 0.5 times 0 plus 0.5 times 180 is 90. 0 0.5 times 100 plus 0.5 times 20 is 60. And 0 0.5 times 200 plus 0.5 times 0 is 100. And if we take the minimum EOL, which is 60, that's the EBPI right there. So take the minimum of the EOLs, that's the EBPI. Now notice that the, the alternative small that had the maximum EMV is the same alternative that has the minimum EOL. That'll always be true. 